Bethel was the place, right, where God gave uh, Jacob the vision, Jacob's ladder. Angels descending and ascending. Amen. Ascending and descending. Amen. You know, and here, right, you know, there, it was there that Jacob built an altar. And, you know, house of God. Man, you know, Beth, you know, you've got to go through Bethel. Man, you cannot get into Jordan, right? You've got to pass through Bethel. Bethel speaks about, amen, the presence of God. Friends, this thing is about our relationship with God. Come on, church. Man, you know, the things that Elijah did was because of his relationship with God. The scriptures declare he had a nature like, come on, he had a nature like, come on, talk to me. He had a nature like us. Man, that you and I, that means, right, the scripture, listen, if you and I, right, you know, take the scripture, amen, you know, as it is, that means, right, he had a nature like you and I. He had a nature like you and I. That means, right, you know, the things that Elijah did, that means, right, that, you know, we can do it as well. Come on. Amen. Each one of us. Amen. Each one of us. And the key thing, right, is our relationship with God. Each one of us, friends, listen, we need to have, right, a vital, we need to have a relationship that's alive. Amen. We need to call upon this name, Jesus. Amen. And the presence of God. Even Elijah, what did Elijah do? Everywhere he went, as the Lord lives before whom I stand. As the Lord lives before whom I stand. Faces Ahab, as the Lord lives before whom I stand. Looks at circumstances, as the Lord lives before whom I stand. Why? What was he saying? The presence of God. Listen, apart from God, we can do nothing. Each one of us. And here, right, battle speaks about the presence of God. Next place they go to is a place called Jericho. Amen. And Jericho, what does Jericho speak of? When you think of Jericho, what do you think of? I mean, we think of the war. We think of battle. And last Sunday, you know, amazing message by Pastor Kim Kong on problems. You know, Jericho speaks about, you know, the conditions that each one of us will have to battle. Amen. Listen, life, come on church, look at me. Life, right, is not just, right, a journey, right, an easy journey. There will be circumstances. There will be unfavorable people, favorable people. There will be unfavorable circumstances, favorable circumstances. But one thing, the thing that we have in our hearts is that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We will go through unfavorable circumstances. Amen. We will battle, right? You know, there will be suffering. Man, you know, some of you know, right? You know, we want to see, you know, I want to see, right? All you guys bless. I want to see, listen, I want to see, we want to see spouses get saved. And we will do whatever it takes, amen, to see, right, family and spouses get saved and family members get saved. And we will do, right, this is what we stand for, amen, this is what we believe. This is really, really, right, you know, us as City Revival, we want to see you, right, experience God's goodness and power. We want to see you, amen, live victoriously. We want to see you guys be blessed. But in this journey, friends, listen, of experiencing the presence, experiencing the blessings of God, listen, there will be suffering, there will be trials, there will be... Amen. God allows this to happen. Every man of God. You look at Elijah. Friends, listen, he had his fair share of trials. Of course, sometimes, right, the trials outside are much easier to deal with than the storms inside. Amen. It's always nice, right, to have the storm outside. It's always nice, right, to look at Carmel and battle, right, the 450 prophets of Baal. It's always easy. But when that storm gets inside, when you're discouraged, when you're depressed, that's tough. Because, right, you are battling yourself. And amazing, right, how, how God responded to him. Why? Because we are his kids. Come on, church. Man, you know, we are his kids. He will take care of his kids. He didn't send a raven. Man, you know, in Elijah's moment of despair, he didn't send a raven, a raven right, to minister to him. He sent his very angel to speak into him. Why? Because, listen, God will do whatever he takes for his kids. Can I hear any man? And sometimes each one of us need to realize as we journey through life. And I was reading a story of this old sickly donkey. This old sickly donkey that one day walking down the farm fell into a big hole. You know, a deep big hole. And then the old farmer, right, walking around. And you know, as the old farmer walks around, calls his friends and listen, and this guy, is, this, this, you know, uh, this donkey is sick. And this donkey is old and it's on the verge of, you know, dying. And so this old farmer goes around, calls his friends out and they say, Man, you know, how can we get this donkey out? There's no way we can get this donkey out. It's a deep hole. It's a deep well. How are we going to get this donkey out? And then the old farmer had a decision to make. Amen. You know, to allow the donkey to suffer or, or what? 
Hello? Come on. No, he couldn't save. There was no way they could save this. All the kids have gone to KL to work. All the young guys, right, had all gone to KL to work. You know, this was in our farm. And, you know, and so, right, you know, they, so they made a decision. It was a tough decision, but they made a decision to fill the hole up you know, and bury the donkey you know, so that the guy will die as quickly as possible. You know. Amen. Amen. And, you know, and so, right, you know, and so the donkey is there, man, you know, he's looking up, you know, looking for help, and he looks as though, right, the tunnel is, you know, it was, it's impossible. He couldn't even see light. You know. He was so deep down inside. You know. And then suddenly, right, he found, right, sand being thrown. You know. And then, right, you know, he began to realize, man, how could they do this to me? How could they, right, you know, want to kill me off? And here, right, he found, he found right, buckets of sand, right, being thrown in this hole. Buckets of sand, buckets of sand, buckets of sand. And this donkey said, man, how could they do this to me after how many years I've served my master? How could they do this to me, right? You know, you know, what, you know, what a way to treat, right, to... A treat someone that you love, or a thing that you, a person, animal that you love, all your animal lovers here. How could you do it? How could my owner do this? And read it, right? And then suddenly a brain wave hit the guy. What did the, he began to take his claws and began to move the sand away. You know, began to take the claws and move the sand away. And then as he began to take the claws and move the sand away, suddenly, right, he was stepping on the sand. The very thing, right, that was meant for his death became the very instrument that God used for his freedom. And so as they began to fill this, as they began to fill the hole with sand, he just brushed it out. Amen. He just put it all this negative stuff, this dirt, these weapons that were here to kill him, just rubbed it off. And then right, he stepped. And as more sand came, he stepped. You know, the more sand, and finally, right, he popped out his head. And then the master had a shock of his life. Amen. Listen, friends, listen. The very things, right, that the enemy may use, amen, to finish you off, la, are the very instruments that God can use to turn it around for your freedom. Can I hear it, amen? La? You know, the very words that people may have spoken to you, la, maybe, right, the very instrument that God will use. La. Come on, look at all the men of God. Look at Elijah's life. Look at, you know, look at Joseph's life. La. What did Joseph say? La? Man, you guys, right, call yourself my brothers, la. And you guys, right, you know, kill me, you know, sold me. And man, you guys tried to fix me. But listen, God is in control. And God used you guys to position us, right, for victory. Can I hear an amen? You know, God used you guys, right? God used, right, listen, all the things that you guys did to me, right? God used you guys for our prosperity. And this is how, right, we need to rebound. Jericho, problems. Listen, we will have problems, Come on, look at the person next to you and say, we will have problems. But we've got a God that can help us. Come on, church. We've got a God that can help us through. We've got a God that can see us through. And then the fourth place he goes to is Jordan. And Jordan, right, was a place of power. Come on. You know, Elijah, right, what does he do? Amen. You know, these guys, right, used to wear a mantle. Amazing, right? This tie was given by a pastor that came last Sunday. Handwoven. And he knew my favorite color. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, and he gave, you know, and he, and it, and, you know, I, I didn't have a chance to acknowledge, gave to, passed it to my wife. Like. But he said, right, hand woven, Burma. And then he said, right, it sprayed over. Like. Oh, man. <laughs> and so, you know, and so, you know, a mantle was something, not, it's not a tie, like, but it was a, a, a little cord, right, that these guys used to wear, like Elijah and some of these prophets, like. You know, it was, they, had their in, they had their clothing, and then it was a little kind of jacket that used to wear. You know, it had slits, and they, you know, just put it around. And here, right, you know, as Elijah stood there, amen, at Jordan, what does he do? You know, initially, right, it was this mantle, amen, that he tossed to Elisha and called him into ministry. Now, Elijah stands at Jordan with this mantle, amen. And what does he do with this mantle? Amen. Here, right, you know, he rolls it up. And then, right, with his mantle, he hits, right, the river Jordan and the Jordan parts. Amen. And soon after that, right, he's caught up by the chariots of fire. And what does he do? He releases the mantle to Elisha. <laughs> they know Elisha, yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
And you know, and you know, and sure, right, Jordan, what is Jordan? What does the mantle speak of? La? The mantle speaks about the power of God, the power of God. And Jordan is a place of power. La. Amen. Right? Even Joshua, right, when they crossed the Jordan. La. Amen. Yes, it was a barrier, but it was a place where the power of God was demonstrated. La. Amen. And so, friends, listen, our journey to our finishing line. La. Amen. It's about right, you know, you know, going through this whole process. La. You cannot, right, get success without going through the process. La. You cannot, friends, listen, right, achieve great things from God, right, you know, by things just happening. La. Because even if things happen, we will not have, right, the character to handle some of the things that God has for us. La. Amen. You know, some of us, right, cannot handle, right, you know, the character, right, to see some of these things that God wants to do. La. We need to go through the process, la. the process of purity. La. We need to go through the process of the, you know, the relationship, the presence of God. You know, the process, even, right, you know, of struggling through adversity la, and experiencing the power. La. Going back to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. La. Amen. And so, right, it started at Gilgal. La. And who was there with Elijah? La. There was a guy by the name of Elisha. La. And of course, you know, right, Elijah had already called Elisha into ministry. La. And here was Elijah. La. Amen. Listen to me, people of God. La. Amen. If you want to, how many of you want to finish well? La? Come on. If you answer. Touch all of the person next to you, shake them, man, slap them at the back and say, I want to finish well. La. Come on. Amen. You know, if, if it's a youth meeting, I'll say, you know, catch all of the person next to you, pull your hair or something. La. Amen. And nobody can pull my hair. La. Amen. Amen. But you see, friends, you know, what do we see here? La? Come on, church, what do we see here? La? Listen, if you want to finish well, you've got to invest in people. La. Hello? Amen. You've got to invest in people. La. Amen. You know, Elijah spent, right, his life, right, the last few, the period of time before he went to be with the Lord, investing in lives. In lives la. You know, before that, it was as though he was a loner. La. He was the man of God. You know, you know he was the guy right on his own. La. And that's probably one of the reasons why you got depressed la, and discouraged. La. Because in your moments of despair, you need a shoulder to cry upon. You need a hand to support you. La. Like Moses had Aaron and her at the mountain. Amen. And so now, right, you know, the last few, you know, as you look at 2 Kings chapter 2, la, you know, they say, right, 2 Kings chapter 2 is one of the most spectacular scriptures in the Old Testament. La. Come on. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 2, right, speaks about, man, you have, right, two great of men of God that did great miracles, la. Amen. A man by the name of Elijah who recorded 19 miracles. Amen. And a man by the name of Elisha. Amen. Who, you know, who Elijah anointed, who he, he got the double the number of miracles that Elijah had. Amen. You see, right, in 2 Kings chapter 2, right, the school of the prophets. You see, right, in 2 Kings chapter 2, right, you know, the very power of God manifested as the river Jordan parted. You see, 2 Kings chapter 2, man, the chariots of fire. The chariots of fire. And whenever I think of chariots of fire, I think of Samson. Hey, Samson. Na, 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 Remember the song? Amen. The movie, Eric Ladle. Amen. And here, right, you know, chariots of fire, he gets the chariots, throws his mantle. And as a result, that the anointing, you know, moves to Elisha. But here, right, friends, listen. What do we see in 2 Kings chapter 2? Elijah invested in people. Come on, church. Elijah invested in people. You want to finish well? As far as God is concerned, you need to invest in people. Amen. You need to invest. La. You know, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, right, we need to invest in our kids. La. Parents, I want to encourage every parent. We need to invest in our kids. La. Do whatever it takes, right? You know, we want to see them, right, excel in their studies. But we also want to see them, you know, excel, excel, excel in their walk with God. La. Amen. We need to invest. La. Do whatever it takes. La. 